Yes, how you doing? This is Archie here tonight with another Bedtime Stories with Arch. Tonight's story will be a robotic hand. Now, the reason why I do my stories in the dark, if you're new and you're just checking up on this now, is the imagination of a child is in the dark is the best imagination for them to visualize a short story or any kind of story on their own. So they come up with their own visions. But um, I'm going to move on to the story now. And uh, like I said, robotic hand. Now a group of boys was doing a camp out during the summer in a fort they built in the backyard of one boy's house. And in that boy's house, the boy found the diary of the of his grandfather, his late grandfather, who passed away long ago. And they're all reading it, going through it. And the grand, the kid's grandfather was a very adventurous man. He was like Indiana Jones, loved to go search for things and uh, try and find gold or silver or anything that was left behind by any ancient person way back, way, way back in the past. Like Indians, Egyptians, all that kind of fun stuff. And even in their own town, the boys read that there was a mountain, a mountain that was uh, off the outskirts of town that had a cave in it grandfather had found and wrote about it. But he also wrote about how he'd never go back. He found something. But there were things in that cave that he didn't want to find out about. So before he got into any danger, he left it alone. Now these boys were courageous and thought they were you know, He-Man people, very brave they thought they were, thinking they were strong adults. They weren't. And after reading the book and finding a map of the mountain, the hole in the side of the mountain, the cave that Grandfather once found, they decided to take their own little journey up there. And what a journey it would be. Little did they know. Did their mother know? What? Did their mother know? What? Did their mother know? Nobody knew, Aaron. They took off on themselves like bad children do. Didn't tell nobody where they were going. Some kids are bad like that. Should get punished for not telling their mother and father where they're going. And that's exactly what they did. And that's why they got into a heap of trouble. And they went to this mountain and cave. So, one day after reading the diary, they gathered up their bikes, flashlights, a little snack and lunch to eat on their way with a, some drinks, two liter bottles of soda, and they were off. Now, the mountain was about five miles away. It took them half an hour to ride on their bikes to get there. And not only that, by the time they got to the mountain, not only were they tired and drained from the long bike ride, they had to climb a big hill. The road that went up the side of the mountain and the climate. And on their way, they were looking at the map. Oh, yeah, right. Started following the road and counting how many layers of the road they climbed. But it didn't take long that when they got up to the eight layer of road that spun up side the mountain. 
that there was behind bushes and brush. Okay. So, they all looked. He studied the door as it was a hole. Didn't have a door, it had a hole. Sorry about that. It was a hole. And they looked and studied it. Very dark. Very creepy. But their grandfather went in there. They could too. So they all broke out their flashlights and began their journey into the cave on the side of the mountain. Now they went down a long, 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 long hallway. <sighs> Till they reached another. Now they reached the door. And the door was locked. Must have been someone there after the grandfather went, or the grandfather might have lost it himself. But nobody knew. And they just broke it. With a big, huge rock, they broke the lock. Because it was so old and weak. Couldn't handle no more. Um, holding the door shut. As soon as they opened the door, it creaked loud because the hinges were rusty. <laughs> And as they walked in, there was a little hallway, and then it went down like a slope, a hill, downward. And they started walking down it, and this walkway started to go to a circle and spiral down the middle of the mountain. And when they got there, there was another door, but this one wasn't locked. And they opened that one. And that door creaked. And they walked in. And up in the center of the big cave room, was drilled a hole that light came in from the sky. So they had a little light in there besides that flashlight. It was like handmade or something had made it. it looked like it had been drilled. But whatever it was, gave very little light. And it was spooky. Like a haunted house. So the boys went in and investigated. There was some doors at the bottom of the cave that when they walked down the passageways or the hallways like on the side of the cave inside the hole you would walk on the side of the cave like a walkway but with no railings. And that would go down like a hill to the bottom of the floor. There was no steps. So when they got down there to the bottom, excuse me, I'm yawning. If I pause a moment, that means I'm yawning, that means it's late, that means I'm tired. Anyways, they got to the bottom of the floor, the light shined dimly, but they could see a lot of stuff. And the doors that they opened up led to other rooms. There was no gold or silver like the grandfather had said. Now, before they went down, I mean, after they went down the hill of the, the walkway hills, and made it to the bottom of the pit-like cave. 
A boy noticed some holes in the side of the wall up on top, across from the way they came in. And he was sitting there looking and said, that's strange. One of them holes for So he ran up back up the hill like passageway and you know, walkways or whatever you want to call them. But he ran back up there and ran straight to the holes. All the other boys were looking down and around and kicking dirt and little sand pile hills all, all over the place to see if there was something buried in it. The boy started to climb. He said, this looks like a ladder, a wall ladder. And you stick your hand in the hole and your two feet and you climb. Mm. He made it to the top. But every hole he went by, there was nothing in it. And when he got to the last hole, he noticed something black. Noticed something that was way in the back. <clears throat> Turned his light on and it was a black box. So, as like any curious kid, like curious George, the boy tugged on the box and took it out. He's trying to climb down back down the wall with the box. But he dropped it, smashed it all the pieces, the box, all the pieces. But what was what was in it did not smash. And Nirvana. Because this case is getting reopened. See, that's not surprising. You know, flash news breaking, Kurt Cobain's case getting back open, which that's not surprising to me because there's a lot of suspicion in that case. But anyways, the guy, the kid broke open the box, and there was a robotic hand-like arm in it. He climbed down quickly to pick it up. Now... The thing had buttons and lights all over it, and you could stick your hand in it. So he stuck his hand in it, hit the on switch, and bzing, a big shiny light blasted from it. And he crushed his hand into a fist. And he ran down the walkway to show all the other kids what he had found. And they were amazed of what he found. So, they all stared with amazement. And just for laughs, the boy slammed the fist on a big boulder smashed it to pieces. Oh, holy moly, he said. All the other kids' eyes bugged out of their heads. They couldn't believe it. So, that is the end of the first half the, bio, the uh, robotic hand. That was part one. Part two will come shortly. And like I say, doing these videos of short stories with Arch in the dark for children to uh, enjoy their own imagination of the story. And my son Aaron has now fell asleep. We had a long day today, and part two will be coming shortly, so we'll, uh, YouTube Nation, we will see you on the next video of Bedtime Stories of Hatch, part two, tomorrow night, out.